Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing with joy. For you guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let us pray. Welcoming and generous God, you make all things new. We are glad to be together on this day. You invite all people into your fold to receive your blessing. Justice and right relations have been their source in you. We are filled with joy to be counted among your children. As we gather, make us one in worship and thanksgiving. We lift our voices to proclaim your all-encompassing love. And so may our praise join with the praise of all your people and reach the ends of the earth, for you are our Savior and our hope. We say together, merciful and wise God, in your presence we confess that we have not lived as you taught us to live. Forgive us for those times we have not welcomed others into our community and those times we have avoided others because something about them made us uncomfortable. Forgive us the ways we have judged unfairly. Reveal to us our own prejudice, which separates us from others, and our failure to seek your goodness in those who seem different from us. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now the collect for the 11th Sunday of Pentecost. Holy One of Israel, covenant keeper, you gather in what has been rejected, restoring what is lost and healing what is wounded. Give us faith to speak out boldly so that the outcast may be welcomed and all be blessed. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right. For soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. Happy is the mortal who does this, the one who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath, not profaning it, and refrains from doing any evil. Do not let the foreigner join to the Lord say, the Lord will surely separate me from his people. And do not let the eunuch say, I am just a dry tree. For thus says the Lord, to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, and who choose the things that please me and hold fast my covenant, I will give in my house and within my walls a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel. I will gather others to them beside those already gathered. The word of the Lord. And now we say Psalm 67 responsively. May God be merciful to us and bless us, show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. 
For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May May God, our our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. And together we pray, blessed are you, Lord God, light of the earth and health of the nations. You lead us in the way of justice and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The second reading is from the book of Matthew. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly the word of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Wow. The the prophet Isaiah today speaks an incredibly powerful, radical, subversive word. And and it's so good to hear. And if if we want to get it, let's look at the context a little bit and understand that uh, the last time we were together, I preached on Isaiah 55. This is um, just a page turn. This is Isaiah 56, but actually it's a number of years later. Um, This is about 515 BC. And I would suggest to you that Isaiah in this passage is speaking to four groups of people. Uh, He's speaking to those who returned from exile. Uh, Those who had been in Babylon for so many years, who finally heard the message and and, and who finally came home. Uh, People who came home to find that their temple was destroyed, that there were foreigners living in their cities and in their towns, and there were strangers living in their homes. They came home to a place that was on the verge of social and economic collapse. Isaiah is speaking to them. Uh, He's also speaking to those who were left behind, those who were not wealthy enough, not powerful enough, not talented enough to be taken into exile. And for decades, they had scratched out a living. For decades, they had worked just to survive. And now... The self-entitled uppity exiles had come back to the city expecting to start to run things again to take charge. Third group, the non-Jews and the foreigners who were living in the country, who were excluded from community, and we're stuck in the middle of it all. Oh, I mentioned a fourth group. That would be you and me and our entire world, everyone who has ears to hear. And, and, and remember, the first 39 chapters of Isaiah, Isaiah was given the people the business because they had messed up. They had not done justice and righteousness. From chapters 40 to 55, we we hear Isaiah reassuring the people that God loves them, trying to reassure them that God is faithful 
And there's that renewal of the covenantal promise, which ended in 55 with Isaiah saying, listen, y'all just come home now, dang it. Okay, today, they, they, they've come home. So what? So what is this newly constituted Israel going to look like? We get a clue from the prophet, from the oracle, who says, thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right. He's talking about the rich and the poor, the strong and the weak being brought together in community. He's talking about dignity and security and well-being, not being just pious, empty words, but being the descriptors of their common life together. And those descriptors were not just for the wealthy and the powerful, they were for all people. And, and the fact is, there's nothing new there. They'd heard that all before. It's what from the time in the desert and the Sinai they were called to do by God. But what comes next? What comes next is amazing because Isaiah rewrites scripture. He totally rewrites scripture in absolute conflict with Deuteronomy 23. I'm not gonna read that for you because we're on YouTube and this is a family show. You can, you can read those words all on your own. But listen to what he says. Do not let the foreigner join to the Lord say, the Lord will surely separate me from his people and do not let the eunuch say, I am just a dry tree. You need to understand that in the old Torah, eunuchs and foreigners were excluded from the community, could not be part of God's covenantal relationship with his people. They were absolutely excluded. These words are radical. They are absolutely radical because what Isaiah is saying is that in this newly constituted Jerusalem, there is no room for exclusion. God's covenant is radically, radically inclusive. It extends to those who had been cut off which is probably a poor choice of words now that I think about it. It extends to those who have been excluded. God's holy mountain, God's temple, is to be a place of prayer for all people. All are welcome. All are welcome. There is no room for judgment. There is no room for hatred on God's holy mountain. Okay, now we get to Matthew. And Matthew, it kind of sounds a bit like harsh words when we hear this reading about Jesus' interaction with the Canaanite woman. But let's put this in perspective quickly, if we can. This follows immediately on the heels of a kind of nasty interaction that Jesus had just had with the Pharisees about who was in and who was out, who was clean and who was unclean what made people clean and worthwhile, and what made them dirty. And, and at the end of that confrontation, Jesus intentionally took his disciples to Tyre and Sidon, Canaanite territory, Canaanite land in, in what is today Lebanon. While he is in Canaan, in, in Canaan, a country populated by Canaanites, a country considered to be unclean, populated by unclean people, while he's there, a Canaanite woman approaches him. And, and before you start to think that Jesus must have been just a little bit racist in this, I want to remind you that Jesus had in his ancestry Tamar, Rahab, and Ruth, three Canaanite women. He had the blood of Canaanite people 
coursing in his veins. So now this encounter takes place. And possibly, as, as some theologians have said, Jesus got caught with his compassion down. It happens to a lot of people. It certainly has happened to me. There are some days people say, I want to tell you how I feel, and frankly, I don't care. I'm just tired and stuck with my own problems. Maybe that was part of it. I doubt it. Possibly, this was a moment where Jesus is being taught by a stranger. Possibly, this is a moment where Jesus, through the faith and determination of this mother, is having his vision of his mission, his ministry in God's kingdom expanded. Possibly. Possibly this is a teaching moment for the disciples and for, and for the woman. Because when this woman, this Canaanite woman, came and said, my, my daughter is sick, my daughter is sick, and he said nothing, that would be the expected response. For him to respond to her, for him to engage with a foreign woman, that would have been inappropriate in his culture. So he said nothing. His disciples get ticked and say, send her away, she's bothering us. And he says to them, not to her, well, I have come only for the lost sheep of Israel. She hears that and she jumps in and says, Son of David, Lord, have mercy, save my daughter. And then he says to her, it wouldn't be right to throw the food for the people, for the sheep, to the dogs. Now, that word dogs was an expression in Jewish culture for non-Jewish people. Now, the word normally used for dogs for non-Jewish people was the word that talked about dogs, wild dogs running around in the street. That's not the word Jesus used. He used the word for a lap dog, a pet. Okay, I, I'm thinking tone and body language matter here because I think Jesus had a smile on his face when he said, it's really not right for me to share the food for the people of Israel with our pets. And I'm sure she looked at him and winked and saw the invitation and said, yeah, but even the pets get to have the crumbs that fall from the table. And he said to her, you have got some faith, my friend. What you're asking for is gonna happen. Now, however that worked out, whatever exactly was going on, the end result of the encounter is this. The end result is a pronouncement that the kingdom of God, God's love, God's mercy, God's healing is without exclusion. It is a moment of radical inclusion where a Canaanite woman, a daughter of the enemy, had her daughter healed. And and immediately after in this chapter, Jesus is up on a mountain and he's healing the blind and the lame and the mute and all the rest of that. And at the end, it says, and they praise the God of Israel. That's an unusual line. See, if they were, were Jewish, it would have said, and they praise God. Didn't say that. It said, and they praise the God of Israel. I want to suggest to you that what happened is after his encounter with the Canaanite woman, he is on a mountaintop and he is healing and saving and redeeming Gentiles from all over the place. A moment of inclusion, radical inclusion. The face of the kingdom of God has changed and changed dramatically. I think that's exciting. So, from Isaiah, from Jesus, we get the picture that the kingdom of God, the covenantal relationship of God with God's children is without exclusion. It is radically inclusive. There is no room for judgment. There's no room for hatred. So how are we doing, folks? How are we doing today? Don't think about it too hard because the answer is we are doing horrible. 
God awful. Our world is fractured, if not broken. Globally, globally, women suffer from injustice, from violence. Globally, women have opportunities to move ahead taken away from them. Globally, men and women suffer at times to the point of death for their sexuality. Globally, decisions are made about a person's value by the color of their skin. Globally, Muslim, Jewish, Christian are at odds with one another. And, and, and that kind of religious bigotry has put the very safety of our planet in question. Globally, we are far better at hate than we are at cooperation. How are we doing? Don't even think about it. It'll break your heart. But listen, it doesn't have to be that way. And I want to share with you, I want to share with you a hymn written by Carolyn Gillette. And Carolyn is a Presbyterian pastor in the United States. And, and Carolyn, we are praying for your husband today as he recovers from surgery. Listen to these words and think about our world. Think about our community. Think about our church. Think about our lives. There is room in God's great welcome. See, the doors are open wide. Here on earth, as in God's heaven, hear the call to come inside. There is so much room for difference, men and women, gay and straight. In God's love, the rooms are countless. There is no room for hate. There is room in our good nation if we stand on justice ground. God has made a good creation. Colors, cultures all abound. Welcome sister, welcome brother, all those yearning to breathe free. There is room for one another. There's no room for bigotry. There is room for understanding for the outcast and the poor, for the Christian, Jew, and Muslim. There is room for these and more. For the people on the fringes, for the ones with long career, there is room for building bridges. There is no room for fear. There is room in faithful churches for the wounded, and oppressed, women who've been told they're worthless, refugees who feel distressed, immigrants who fear the future, people scorned and pushed and shoved. God, may we seek what you treasure. May we all make room for love. Amen.
We say together the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Welcoming God, you gather everyone, especially the outsiders, to worship you, for you are not an image or idol, but protector of the helpless, parent to the poor, friend of the lonely. Accepting Christ, there is not any place you will not go to bring God's grace to others. In you, the enemy is made a friend, the broken are made whole, the orphan finds a home. Embracing spirit, your gentleness falls upon us and our fears of rejection disappear. Your truth is whispered in our ears and our arms embrace strangers. Your peace is poured into our souls and we are reconciled to all we hurt. Your love throws open our shuttered hearts and we see our sisters and brothers all around us. And so, Creator God, for all that we are and all that we do, all we wish we could do and all we long for. We pray for everything we work for in our church and community and everything we hope for in the face of so much change. We pray for the choices we face in our country and community, in our homes and workplaces, and for all the responsibilities we bear in our different roles. We pray for the troubles that weary us, the situations that puzzle us, and the uncertainty that surrounds us. We remember before you each situation that worries us and each person we care about. Living Christ, you are the source of peace and new possibility for us all. Help us trust in your grace for today and tomorrow. Fill us with the strength and hope we need to walk with you, united in your love. Amen. And now, joining our prayers and praises together, we pray in the words that Jesus taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May God bless you with a restless discomfort about easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships, so that you may seek truth boldly and love deep within your heart. May God bless you with a holy anger toward injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may tirelessly work for justice and freedom and peace among all people. May God bless you with the gift of tears to shed with those who suffer from pain, rejection, and starvation or the loss of all that they so cherish so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and transform their pain into joy. May God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you really can make a difference in this world, so that you are able with God's grace to do what others claim cannot be done. And now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love and pray for today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Amen.